What's going on everyone? It's Alex here from Alex Physio. So today we're going to be going over the Trendelenburg gait pattern. Welcome. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Alexander Kravich. I'm a physiotherapist in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm going to be chatting a little bit about the Trendelenburg gait pattern and what's going on when we see this gait. So basically, the Trendelenburg gait can be as a result of a bunch of different reasons. But the reason that we're going to chat about today is if there is some form of gluteus muscle weakness, particularly your gluteus medius and your gluteus minimus muscles. So these muscles are basically responsible to try to help stabilize your pelvis when you're walking to keep it level and prevent your hip from dropping. Because when we look at the mechanics of our walking, when you take a step and you lift the other leg up in the air, because the center of gravity is around your belly button area, the tendency is going to be for the hip to drop or the pelvis to drop on the side of the leg that's in the air. So what has to happen then is your glute medius and your minimus muscle has to activate in order to help keep your pelvis level when you take that step. Because if you think about the mechanics of walking, every time you take a step, you're basically balancing on one leg for that period of time until the other foot comes on the ground. So if you don't have the appropriate strength and the appropriate motor control of your those hip muscles when you're in this position before you're about to take another step, then there are two things that are going to happen. The first thing that's going to happen is your pelvis is going to drop on that side of the leg that's in the air because the muscles aren't able to activate enough, I guess you could say, to the point to be able to support your pelvis or keep it in neutral. Then the other thing that could happen is you would trunk lean or you would lean your torso towards the leg that's on the ground in order to minimize the amount of work that's being done. So this would be typical in somebody who May, this is called a compensated Trendelenburg gait pattern when you're leaning your trunk towards the leg that's on the ground. And then an uncompensated or just a regular Trendelenburg gait pattern is when your pelvis drops. And it's a very subtle movement and it's hard for me to demonstrate it because obviously I don't have a Trendelenburg gait pattern, at least from what I know. However, sometimes you'll see individuals when they walk, they will do what's called a waddling gait pattern or, or informally known as a waddling gait pattern where every time they take a step, especially if they have the weakness on both sides of their, of their hips or both gluteus medius and, and minimus muscles, is when they walk, they're going to lean their trunk on each side of the leg that's on the ground. And they're doing that in order to minimize basically the amount of work that's being done. That's one of the reasons, of course, there are other neurological reasons that may be explaining some of that pathology, but one of them is because that muscle is weaker. And then the other one is when you walk or when you take a step, my pelvis is dropping on that side where the leg is up in the air, not on the ground. So I take a step and then drop when I lift the other leg. When we see individuals come into the clinic, there are ways that we can assess your strength in your gluteus medius muscle because your gluteus medius and gluteus minimus muscle, they're primarily responsible for hip external rotation or rotating your hip outwards, hip abduction, and in some cases for your glute medius muscle, a little bit of hip extension too. So it's important that we try to train and strengthen this muscle in those different movement patterns in different positions to try to minimize the amount of Trendelenburg gait that you may be having if we notice some weakness or some pelvic dropping when we assess your single leg strength or your single leg balance. We're looking to see if there's a drop in your pelvis and it's, it's very subtle, but it, it can be something that can be noticed. Why do we share this information or why are we talking about the Trendelenburg gait? If it is something that you've been having for a while or if you have hip pain or knee pain or foot pain or ankle pain, everything is all connected. It's, it's one big kinetic chain. And if you have that walking pattern for a longer period of time, then what can happen is it can change how the loads are distributed in your knees, hips, foot or ankle, which can sometimes lead to pain after a prolonged period of time. Not always because your body can adjust and it can develop the appropriate compensatory patterns. But anytime somebody is coming in with some sort of extremity pain, we always want to try to assess the strength, 
the stability and the, the movement in some of those movement patterns to see if there's something that may be contributing to the reason why you're coming to see a physiotherapist in the first place. So there you have it. We went over the Trendelenburg gate and we went over some of the patterns and the, and the pathology and what may cause Trendelenburg gate, primarily the weakness of the gluteus medius and minimus muscles. Do you have Trendelenburg gate pattern or have you been told by somebody that you do? What have you found that has helped? What exercise or movements or, or things that you, have you done to try to help with the symptoms? Let me know down below. And if you find value in my content or you found value in this video, consider subscribing and checking out some of my other content. I have over 400 videos on various physio, exercise, and medical related content. Until then, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.